834 on your Sunday, three Republicans hope to challenge Elizabeth Warren for her Senate seat this November. Today, John Keller sits down with one of those candidates, State Representative Jeff Deal. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us. It's right around the corner. September 4th is primary day. And on that day, Republicans and independents who pull a GOP primary ballot will have a choice of three candidates in the race for U.S. Senate to challenge the incumbent Elizabeth Warren in November. Uh, we recently spoke with one of those candidates, Beth Lindstrom. We hope to speak soon with another, John Kingston, who, full disclosure here, is a client of my son Barney, a political consultant based in Washington, D.C. But today, we're going Glad to welcome the third candidate in the group, former or current state representative, excuse me, Jeff Deal of Whitman, whose recent activities include a lead role in the 2014 repeal of the automatic gas tax increase and a role, a key role in the 2016 Donald Trump presidential campaign here in Massachusetts. Jeff, welcome. John, thanks so much for having me. Good to have you here. So, is this primary and the general election to follow going to be? in any significant way a referendum on President Trump? Well, I think, of course, you can't avoid talking about the president pretty much every day he makes news. But I think Massachusetts really wants to focus, uh, I think this voters want to focus on what's important for them. That's what I've been talking to people about going across the state for the last year uh, campaigning. And really, Elizabeth Warren has abandoned this state. I think the day she was elected as senator, she put us in the rearview mirror to use this as a springboard for the run for 2020 in the White House. That's left people in the fishing industry, uh, machinists out in uh, Holyoke and Springfield area. Uh, a lot of people across the state really feeling like she's never been working for them. And uh, in fact, she's got a voting record that really shows that she hasn't been and helping them. The tax reform bill of 2017 has given Massachusetts the uh, country leading lowest unemployment, 3.5% right now, uh, record unemployment. $1.2 billion in new revenue to the state based on the fact that more people are working, more wage, uh, wage increases. I mean, it was completely successful. She voted against that, called it crumbs. Well, and I think that she's really out of touch right now with the middle class she said she was supposed to represent. Well, let's talk about an issue that's very important to Massachusetts voters. You've just mentioned it, the economy. Uh, the Trump administration's recent emphasis on tariffs uh, and the resulting trade war that has ensued is uh, concerning to a lot of business people uh, here in Massachusetts that I speak with who rely heavily on international trade. Are you uh, with them? Uh, in terms of concern, or are you with the Trump administration? Well, look, I think I'm for the businesses of Massachusetts, and I have been for a long time. When we saved taxpayers and businesses $2 billion with that gas tax, I think people know I'm on their side. Uh, the fact of the matter is this trade war has been going on for decades, and the president's the first one to really address it. We've had a 9% differential for our lobster uh, lobstermen when they're trying to sell their catch uh, over in the European market versus uh, Canada. So we need to make sure that we're working for them. But uh, to be honest with you, since April 1st, when the uh, tariffs started taking effect, the U.S. stock market's been up 3.5%, and uh, the Shanghai index is down 20%. So it's having an effect in China. It's forcing them to come to the table and start renegotiating old trade uh, that really hasn't been working for us. Well, in the meantime, you mentioned the lobster men. I just was watching a story on CBS News about uh, the main lobster industry that's uh, uh, terrified about the consequences of, of this continuing because huge tariffs have been slapped on their products that they try to export into China, and it puts them at an economic disadvantage. Uh, the president watches this segment regularly. No, I, I, I don't <laughs> think he does, but maybe he, he, he will. Uh, speak to him directly. What would you tell him about tweaking if you believe that's necessary, his trade policy. Well, look, I think what he's doing right now is a short-term hit for a long-term gain that we have been really kicked down the can, the can down the road for too long on. Uh, the other thing, too, is we've got incredible GDP, 4.1% right now, on its way to potentially 5%, growth we never saw under the Obama administration. And what that's doing is giving us the economic advantage right now to renegotiate deals. Like in Europe, uh, it kind of went under the radar, but the European Union has renegotiated to give us better trade deals when we threatened the uh, German uh, automakers about their cars coming into here. They said, you know what, we need to get the European Union on on board with getting the U.S. better balanced trade around uh, around Europe, so it's starting to work. We got to take a break real quickly, though. You were co-chair of the Trump campaign here. Do you expect him to endorse you? 
<laughs> Look, I don't know if you can really predict anything the president's going to do, okay. but I have been uh, fortunate enough to have people uh, that did support him come and help me. So okay. I've had Sean Spicer come to do an event. I've had uh, Governor LePage uh, come down and, and help me with a campaign. We'll have Herman Cain coming shortly. So a lot of people who supported the president are up here now, and we'll see after the primary is over uh, where we go. Maybe the man himself. <laughs> Maybe. We'll take that break and we'll continue our conversation with Jeff Deal, Republican candidate for U.S. Senate. So please stay with us.